ladies and gentlemen, from Spain, please welcome Paula Badosa. A former Indian Wells champion in Miami to face the current Indian Wells champion. The seventh instalment of the rivalry between Spain's Paula Badosa and Elena Rubakina about to take place on stadium court. Well, it was a fascinating opening match the other night for the Wimbledon champion. It was full of twists and turns and a rather baffling collapse in the second set against Anna Kalinskaya from 4-1 up. Five games in a row were lost and there went the set. And here comes the decider, but she got through in the end. And another chance to have a crack at a player she knows so well. But also having Sophie Amiak alongside me again, delighted to say, having a really stop-start season this year, injury's been an issue for her as well, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, she was number two in the United even what, it was a year ago in the world. And Less than a year ago, Just, yeah. you know, completely, you know, lost her ground and her tennis and started to lose confidence and... You know, from that point on, now she's finding herself uh, way down on the ranking, which is really, you know, rough because she has, you know, the dose of the talent to be one of the top ten, and I think she really belongs in the top ten players. And even last week when she played again, she played against uh, Rebakina. I mean, she was really holding her own, and you know that she's gonna come back if she's, of course, injury free, which is a big if. That's very important. Miriam Blay in charge of this. We back in a not hesitant at all. She wins the toss and she serves. That's how she's going to start this contest tonight. 14 aces from her the other night. It was uh, impressive. It patches the serving. So the number 10 seed and the number 21 seed. The doser looking to find some consistency of performance and fitness as well. A, a season that started so well with a run to the semi finals and it kind of stopped Sophie, didn't it? Because of that abductor injury she picked up there. Yes, and she was, uh, of course, very disappointed because when you start the season and you get to a point where you're like doing so well pre-Australian Open, you feel like, oh, this is going to be maybe a trend point for her to play well at the Australian Open, had to pull out of the Australian Open. And as you can see on this, we are waiting for Martich and Mertens, who are still waiting to play. This has been a long, long time for them to get on court, and they're not even close to getting there. <laughs> There's still a match to play on their court, so the winner playing this one as well. I should say as well, Martina Trevisa and Claire Liu involved in a real battle as well, then into a third set elsewhere in Miami tonight. So a busy night, 23-year-old, number 10 seed here, this fortnight and it was impressive the way she found a way because after that wobble in the second set against Karen Skyer, her coach Stefano Vukov was getting agitated as we normally see from back in it very rarely do you see a reaction she just hit the reset button and found a way to come back and that was really really impressive for a player who must have been feeling a bit mentally tired as much as anything else well, she just comes from a, a huge victory down in Indian Wells different conditions and you know it's, it's, she pretty much had to turn around and uh, start again uh, and, you know, when you travel Monday, you get there, Tuesday you get a hit, Wednesday a little hit, then you play your first, you know, first opening round, although you had a bye. You know, it's tough conditions because of, you know, it's just completely different. All of a sudden you're going into the community factor, and she was getting really hot. I mean, you could tell on her face, and you know, her facial expression it looked like she was really struggling with, uh, with the heat, so hopefully tonight. As it is, as humid, comes about 75% humidity, hopefully she's going to be okay, at least used to it a little bit more. Well, a quarter finalist here last year, she lost to Jessica Pagula, the power of the dosa, and she was the world number seven at that stage. Just over a month later in Stuttgart, she made the semi finals and she was the world number two. It meant so much to her, and she said it had been on her mind for such a long time, knowing that she could one more win here, one more win there, and she would climb to number two in the world. But in a way, it then became a little bit of a lead weight. And when you look at the rest of her year, 
After making those semis in Stuttgart, she only won back to back three more times in the rest of the year, which just suggests why, one of the reasons why that ranking has taken a tumble, and of course the injury at the start of this year. Yeah, that's rough because she started to play really well this year, you know, coming out of this really bad patch in 2022. And uh, as we're looking at uh, the tech to head two, two or two, I thought it was, uh, I thought they played wow. a little more than that. But, they uh, have. Yeah, they played, they played six, six times. Six yeah, is much different than uh, what we have. So it's four and two for Badosa, actually. Uh, they played six times in total. And uh, we were actually talking off air about why was she, you know, winning so many times uh, Paula Badosa against Riva Kina before. I think it was before she was a little bit more consistent. I think she was... Uh, and comparing to Rebakina who herself, I think now has lifted it really again to the consistency level that is bringing her to the forefront of the, the women's tennis tour. Back. But we were, oh that's a nice, nice shot. We were looking through the stats as well, so if you know what I mean, when you look at the numbers, first uh, points one for Badoza, so this is a key backwards tonight, isn't it? She's seventh in the WTA rankings, second serve points one, she's eighth, overall service points one, seventh, but break points converted 101. Now there's a bit of a clue, but the serves functioning, which it, it, it wasn't quite so much, was it, against Rebecca in Indian Wells? No, it wasn't. She's got a great break. chance, but if you're not taking those break points, you're not going to have a chance. Yeah, she was one out of six break points for Russia in, in uh, Indian Wells when they played last week, so, and, and you know, she was really close. She was two and five, as we were looking Well, the probability are not really shocking in the way that uh, Rebecca has been playing, but yeah, I mean, I think, think it's closer than that, don't you? Yeah, well, <laughs> I think that, you know, for Fatosa tonight, it's all about elevating the level that she played so better. She was only at 57% of uh, first serve, and we'll see what the battle can bring tonight.